Hi everyone, this is the ninth game in the Bullying series and this is um, probably a long awaited one. I'm sure many of you may have seen this game before, but for those who haven't, prepare to be blown away by the brilliance of it. Um, I am in the mood for sweating videos today because I didn't do one yesterday. And this game is the 16th round of the World Championship between Anatoly Karpov and Gary Kasparov. In a couple of videos time, there's another game uh, between these two as well in the World Championship, which is also brilliant. But for now, um, this um, the game, I think it was tied 7 half each at this point, with both um, players having won two games each. Um, so this game could prove one of the decisive ones. And Karpov was white and opened with E4. And Kasparov, uh, who sweats the Sicilian defence, played the Sicilian. But um, instead of his usual knight off, he played the timing off. And after takes knight c6, Karpov decided to um, erect the um, Marozzi wall, which is quite a good opening to choose against Kasparov because Kasparov's a very like dynamic attacking player. So some slow in position, although he was stronger that as well. He is um, his, his biggest strength was um, or was being aggressive. And after knight f6, knight 1c3, a6, and knight a3, we are still well within theory. But at this point, um, Kasparov actually invented a gambit called the Kasparov Gambit, where it's the, you um, sacrifice a pawn to break the um, bind and try and take advantage because um, White's been moving his knight around a lot and it's a bit misplaced on a3. And he played d5. This gambit was played in an earlier game. And Karpov played cautiously and the game was draw very quickly. But this time they had both prepared. So whose preparation is going to win? Well after accepting the gambit and knight b4. Kasparov's trying to regain the pawn. And Karpov plays bishop b2 which is his improvement and a good move and start of the uh, refutation of it. And now if Kasparov had played knight ta b takes d5. Then this runs into castles. If bishop takes a3, then white should play queen a4 check, takes a3 to avoid the double pawns. Bishop e7 is best, and after knight takes d5, knight takes d5, bishop f3, bishop e6, and knight c2 coming into d4. And white's got a much better position here, despite the equal material now. Instead, bishop c5 was played, where Kasparov is making it into a real gambit. And the refutation which was found after the game was bishop e3 and after takes you play queen a4 check forking the king and knight and after knight d7 queen takes b4 bishop c5 check king f8 and castles. Black's king is misplaced and white is still up a pawn thus giving white a clear advantage and this um, has put the Kasparov gambit out of business. However, Karpov did not know the refutation and instead just castled, which now makes the game dynamically equal, i.e. white's up a pawn but black has compensation due to active piece play. Castles, bishop f3 and bishop f5 and soon we are going to see an octopus knight, which is a King's Crusher did a, a version of this as well a few years ago and he called it the octopus knight and we are going to see why he called it that. After bishop g5, rook e8. Queen d2 and b5. Now black is starting to have some brutal threats. And after rook a d1, he now puts the knight into um, d3. And it's and look how, how brutal that knight is. Black has got clear compensation for the pawn. And he's also threatening b4 to fight the knights. And it's no surprise that even a player as strong as Karpov immediately went wrong with knight a b1, which is just passive. He should have played d d6, uncork an attack onto the rook, and um, Kasparov could actually sack the exchange and get some good compensation due to good control of the light squares, but instead probably best is rook a7, knight d5, queen takes d6, takes, g takes, and although black's won the pawn back and has got the octopus knight still, black's king is potentially open and has got fractured pawn structure. And there is chances for both sides here, but I think Kasparov is probably, well black is probably slightly better. But this is better than the game continuation. After knight a b1, Kasparov now begins an absolute masterpiece of a game. This game is put, should be entitled Kasparov's Masterpiece. And it, watch how Kasparov just gets slowly positionally crushed. After h6, bishop h4, 
now plays b4, taking the knight away, and after knight a4, bishop d6. And there is all sorts of nasties coming along, like rook c8 and bishop f4, which traps the white queen in the centre of the board. So bishop g3 to stop the bishop coming into uh, f4, rook c8, and now b3. And w if white can recycle a knight from b2 to c4, then he will be okay. But now Kasper plays an absolute great move with g5, which looks really bad weakening the king's side, but white's pieces are that passive, he can't exploit the weakness. And in fact, black is just going to clamp it down in f4, and one day he's going to um, begin a pawn storm on the white king, and white can't do anything. And now it also has a um, reputation against knight b2. If knight b2, then knight takes b2, queen takes b2, and now g4, followed by rook c2, winning a piece, because um, white's bishop was forced to... Uh, e2 by the g-pawn. If white tries to attack with h4, the idea is to chisel away um, the king side, then knight h4, h takes g5, h takes g5, bishop takes f4, bishop takes f4, queen takes b4, white's up two pawns, but now he is crushed by bishop d6, queen d2, g4, bishop e2, and knight h5, and now rook c2 with an infiltration is threatened, and queen h4 is threatened, too many threats to deal with, and white is lost. So instead, uh, white's cramped, so he decides to swap some pieces off. Now g3, he wants to um, recycle his bishop to a feet and shuttle position, and hopefully weather the onslaught and maybe consolidate the extra pawn one day, which is also passed, as well as isolated. Now Kasparov, play, Kasparov plays another great move, knight d7. The idea is to reroute the knight to e5, and then if the white bishop ever manages to swap it off for the um, knight, then the other knight can come into d3. And black has still got this awful octopus knight. Also, the bishop which is protecting the knight, if it is ever harassed, it can always retreat to h7 safely. And white is just stuck in a horrible bind here. And Karpov is one of the most greatest positional players, and he's just getting uh, positionally crushed. He plays bishop g2, completing the fianchetto. The best try, I think, is knight b2, queen f6, another great move. And it, by the way, if knight takes d3, then after bishop takes d3, queen takes d3, knight e5, wherever white's queen goes, um, it, it, well, if it goes to the e line, which is its only chance, then it, a discovered attack wins it with knight takes f3. And if it goes to d2, then knight takes f3 check wins it anyway, so, so white's losing the queen. However, white can play knight c4, knight 7 e5, knight takes, knight takes, bishop g2, bishop d3. Now a bishop enters this square, and now f4, rook c2. If f takes c5, then trying to um, take advantage of black's queen, and queen b6 check gets out with tempo. So queen e3 is forced, then bishop takes, rook takes, g takes f4, rook takes f4. And although um, white's down the exchange, he does have a pawn for it, and white, black's king is a bit open. But this is still clearly better for black, if not winning. But this was the best practical chance. So he plays bishop g2, and now queen f6 anyway, and just white's knights are just completely dominated. The a4 knight has got no squares, and the b1 knight has got no squares. It's like Kasparov's two pieces up. Now a3, and now b takes a3 will be a horrible, horrible strategic blunder, but now he just plays a5, supporting the pawn, and after takes, takes. White's knights are still both incarcerated, and now he plays queen a2. The idea is, although the queen's now passively placed, White's knight can at least come into d2 and then c4. Now he plays bishop g6, where knight d2 is met by the infiltration, rook e2, with a dangerous pin. So he plays d6, giving the pawn back to at least activate the light square bishop. But Kasparov just ignores it and plays another brutal move, g4. Now the um, light squares around white's king are becoming loose, especially if he loses that bishop. The pawn has clamped down on h3 and f3 and he's taking even more space. White is just lost here. Now queen d2, so white admits defeating that plan, and now he's just, he's just wasted the move. And now he's threatening queen takes h6, so black just plays king g7, defending the pawn calmly. And now there is even plans of 
In fact, if white does nothing, then he's just going to play h5, h4, rip open white's king and win easily. Because white's pieces are stranded on the queen side, doing nothing. So Karpov tries to break out with f3, but when you try and break out in an inferior position, if you try and use force in an inferior position, then usually a stronger force will get you. And now, after queen takes d6, Karpov's one last chance was the tactical queen b2 check. Taking advantage of the pin on the D line. So Queen F6. Takes, takes, F takes, Knight takes. But Black is still winning this. Although it's equal material, White's Knights are incarcerated. Black's Knights are killing. And Black's Rooks are just going to infiltrate and um, win all, win pawns and pieces. And this is lost. But as bad as the end game is, the middle game is even worse. Because now F takes G4. After F takes G4. Now queen d4 check, and black's queen is now very strong centralized, it stops the queen b2 check, and also checks the white king. And after king h1, knight f6, now knight takes g4 and knight f2 check are coming, and now also knight e4. After rook f4, knight e4, white is practically compelled to give up his, his queen with queen takes d3. If rook takes e4, then after rook takes e4, queen takes d3, queen takes d3, rook takes d3. Now comes rook e1 check, and well, white's, all white's pieces are practically dropping off except the um, knight on a4 because bishop f1 is forced, then that goes, and then the rook goes as well, or the knight and then the rook. It's just um, white's lost all his pieces here. Say this could happen, or the rook could be taken, but in this position, black's a rook up anyway. So he plays queen takes d3, at least gets rid of the octopus knight. And white does have one little trick left, but it doesn't quite work. After na after knight f2 check, rook takes f2. If king g1, then queen takes d3, rook takes d3, knight takes d3, rook f1, and rook c2. And white blacks up the exchange, and black's rook's coming to e2 next move, and white's just going to lose. Just look how all plus these knights are all game. Kasparov is just completely dominating Karpov. So now, so now rook takes f2, bishop takes d3. And white's last little trick was rook fd2. Where it looks like after knight b2, white's getting a third piece for the queen, which is good for him. But now comes queen e3, unpinning and threatening bishop takes b1, forcing rook takes d3. And now he plays rook c1, leaving the queen on pre to get a basket full of pieces in return. Queen e1 check, bishop f1 is unclear. So, rook c1, and if the queen is taken, then we just take here. And now we don't play rook takes f1 because then white can play king g2 with equality. So we just um, take the rook, and now in one of white's pieces is falling, so black's going to be up um, like something like two rooks for two minor pieces. So he plays knight b2, finally recycling the knight, and now comes queen f2. Eyeball in the night. Rook takes d1, rook takes, and queen takes b3 also wins easily. But the text is better because after queen f2, now um, if if knight, well he plays knight d2. If rook takes c1, then takes a mate. So knight d2, and now rook takes d1 check. Knight takes d1, and rook e1 check. And now after after a piece blocks, then white black just sacrifices the rook for it, and then he mates with the queen on um, f1 like in the previous variation. And what a beautiful game! This is definitely one of Kasparov's finest games. Just completely strategically dominating Karpov, and he eventually wins the match because of the help of this. And I hope you enjoyed this um, brilliant game by Kasparov. Please um, would you subscribe to us, like our Facebook page, and follow us on on Twitter. I shall put the links in the description box. And also join our chat on Epic Chess. But for now, please leave any comments and thoughts. Thanks very much.